the home of the manta ray, right? But um, we could also be home of the turtle. There are, you, I mean, you pretty much can't come here. You pretty much can't get in the water without seeing a turtle. Lady Elliot is a great place to conduct research because it's a biodiversity hotspot and it also has a really great resident population of turtles. So you get to see baby turtles. They are the cutest thing you'll ever see. But the ultimate goal for this project is to look at the impacts of plastic um, and also the accumulation of toxins as well. And I think personally there's something so special about having a wild animal like look you in the eye and kind of be as inquisitive about you as you are about them. My name's Caitlin Smith and I'm a PhD candidate at the University of the Sunshine Coast. So we're here on Lady Elliot Island for the next couple of days and what we're here trying to do is look at the impacts of plastics on our resident turtle population uh, and more specifically looking at chemicals that are associated with the plastics and how they accumulate into the turtle's body and how that affects their health. In the stillness somewhere above The city lights you're falling in love Turtles definitely bring out this like fierce protectiveness in people. People want to really help them as much as they can. But they're pretty remarkable animals. They've been around for like 40 million years on Earth. I mean, like you can literally see turtles the entire year. If you come out here during um, yeah, August, September or October, you might see mating turtles. So you get these like stacks where they're all stacked on top of each other when they're mating. If you come out anywhere around October, November, December, January even, you'll have uh, lots of nesting turtles where they're actually coming onto the beach to lay their eggs of an evening, uh, which is a pretty good time of year because they come up and they spend hours on the beach when they're nesting, so you have a more chance of kind of running into them. And then anywhere around like January through to March, April is when we're sort of seeing the hatchlings. They are a little bit harder because they run down the beach so quickly, so you really have to be in the right place at the right time to see the hatchlings. harmful for turtles because they have these backward facing spines that line their esophagus and that is for their food. So when they're in the water column they use water to ram down their food because they don't have the capacity for swallowing like we do um, and then they throw that water back up. So when plastics enter the marine environment and they get broken down into those smaller pieces, they start to collect what's called a biofilm around the surface area of the plastic. And that biofilm is made up of bacteria and viruses. It make, also makes it really sticky. And so when it comes into contact with uh, chemicals like herbicides and pesticides that are run off from the land and heavy metals from in industries, um, those chemicals and heavy metals bind to the outside of the plastic. And when they're ingested by turtles, that biofilm then breaks apart and the chemicals are accumulated into the turtle's body. Adult green sea turtles typically just eat seagrass, whereas the juveniles uh, are eating jellyfish, gooseneck barnacles, and a lot of other critters that are in the surface waters. And that's where we get the majority of marine debris and plastic pollution. degradable in itself just means that things just break down further and further right and so all plastic degrades when we say biodegradable if it, it will, will break down into its base components and so if it's made out of petroleum based plastic it's just that's what it's going to break back down into and sea turtles tend to well they're finding that yeah turtles are just taking in plastic which I think most people are familiar with but it's not just like the plastic bags you hear about it's balloons that enter into the ocean little hatchlings eat those when the hatchlings first make it to the water uh, their first few days of their life they just bump feet into whatever they find so if it's plastic debris and things like that they just take it in and um, the researchers that are actually here at the moment one of the studies they found was that I think it was uh, taking in one piece of plastic uh, takes their chance of dying up to 20% straight away so what you want to look for is compostable that's the best thing to look for We're going to 
going to be conducting our research right here on the reef and we're going to be collecting 15 green turtles and five hawksbills. So we're going to be catching these turtles by snorkeling. So we'll have three people out in the water looking for turtles. So the capturing process of the turtles is very harmless. And when they finally catch them, they hold on to the top and the bottom of the shell. And we go through a rigorous process of getting animal ethics and lots of different permits so we can do this research. Uh, once we get the turtles onto the boat, we can start sampling. And so we take their weight and their measurements to make sure they're nice and healthy and then we get a blood sample um, so this is an ice stack cartridge so I put a tiny little sample of blood into the cartridge and I've snapped it closed and now we're going to put it into the ice stack analyzer in the bottom there and in about two minutes it will print out a health assessment for us we also attach titanium tags that have unique codes on them so we know exactly who each turtle we sample is. And then we also take a shell sample. It's exactly the same thing as cutting a toenail because it's also made out of keratin so there's very limited feeling in that shell and they don't feel a thing. We also use the carapace for heavy metals and that's because uh, each year the turtle gets a new layer of shell and so we can look at the amount of accumulation of heavy metals over a long period of time whereas the blood just gives us a snapshot of what was present at that moment. And then we take a small tissue sample and a cloacal sample. And the cloacal sample is really important because we're using that to test for the presence of microplastics. And so we'll use the small fecal sample on the bud to test for the different polymers of plastic. You know it is true That you are lost and this is a clue to look for turtles at Lady Elliot. I mean, literally, it's everywhere, but one of the best places is the lagoon on the eastern side of the island. It's super shallow, and there's turtles in there all the time. They feed on all the algae. They've got a couple of resting stations, and they're so friendly. That's one thing I think that's really special. I've actually not seen turtles behave like this anywhere else, to be honest with you. Um, they really will come up and check you out. One of the girls has a video she showed me just before of a turtle literally coming up, and it's like bumping into her camera. But yeah, we've also got little cleaning stations where you just see like five or six turtles just floating there while little fish come and clean their shells so yeah it's really cool because they're not swimming away or anything like that they're not scared of us because I think they get treated really respectfully here so they're just I don't know they're used to people and they're really relaxed around humans which is amazing. Do you know what love means? This is insane Saying things I can't explain I know where your heart is Where you wanna be So why do you keep testing me? So this particular study is great to educate the general public and the larger population because a lot of people don't know that turtles accumulate just everything that you put down your sink. Marine turtles are used as an environmental indicator, so if there's something wrong with your turtle population, there's usually something wrong with the entire ecosystem that you're working in. And by using turtles as an environmental indicator, we can actually gauge what's going on at Lady Elliot. As a guide here, one of the most rewarding things for me is when I can share these experiences with people. Just the joy that you see on people's faces when they get to be part of this really incredible natural encounter. And you just see this smile on these people's faces and it, it literally changes their lives. And so I often get people thanking me for that, but I'm like, I just got as much out of that as you did. It's really special. Thank you.